Good afternoon once again. Welcome to episode 706, 706 in case you're wondering. And the topic today is, um, do you give away your power in a relationship? Here's why and what to do. I trust I'll be able to tell you those <laughs> answers in a minute. Before we jump into the topic though, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I'm here. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I help women create balance in love, life, and business. It's my passion, it's my service, it's my work. And it's also what inspired these talks called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart over two, two and a half years ago. Um, and this is actually um, abbreviated down to MFTM on the front end of my broadcast because I have a lot more to talk about in the titles. And so we're now at episode number 706. And the topic today is, do you give away your power in a relationship? Why do you do it and what to do? Oh, sorry, why you do it and what to do about it. I think it's what I said that way around. So let me let me just jump in and see where it goes because frankly, I'm in the mist, in the dark as much as you are in some ways because I don't have scripts or anything and this is usually a, usually a download or a memory combined with downloads that I get when I share this stuff. So let's have some fun, shall we? <laughs> and I'm, I'm, just so you know, also I may stray from the romantic relationship conversation because some of this stuff applies to any relationship, particularly family members. So keep that in mind. So when you say you give away your power, it basically gives, it's, it's when you um, hmm, give away your choices more than anything else. Because it's not like you're saying, here's my power, put it over there, although energetically the way you are doing that, because when you're giving away your power, what you're literally doing is making somebody else more powerful than you. Which means that you give them the choice, always, and it's not so much where you do it because you trust them, or you do it because you want to hear what they want to say, you must do it by default because maybe you don't trust your own choices and I'll get to that in a minute. This, as I said, can extend beyond the romantic relationship conversation because a lot of the stuff I'm talking about here applies to every single relationship you have out there. Every single one. Family members, spiritual teachers, business people you work with, bosses, boys, whatever that is, always different things. And so this particular topic can impact every area of your life if you take it to heart. So join me and listen along. Why not? Why not? Why not? So giving away your power is something that women particularly tend to do more than men do. Although some men, and I did, some men do this as well. And I say I have my own history where I did that. When I was being bullied, that was one of the most clear experiences I had of giving away my power. Um, I did a whole talk about that another time. So I'm not going to jump into it here. But women particularly have been trained in our culture over millennia to give away their power to men. Any man, not just their, not just their husband or their boyfriend, but their employer, their, again, maybe their father, brothers, stuff like that in every dynamic because the culture we live in, as I said many times before, it is a, um, a culture, a society created by men for men and women have been trying to fit in ever since. That's kind of the way I say it. And the truth is really, in the power struggle or the power conversation, women haven't really claimed their power in a way that's been, I'll be careful how I say this. I was going to say effective, but that may not be the right word. There may be, maybe not inclusive, that's a better way of saying it. There has been a fight for women to claim their power, which is what launched, which is one reason why we had the feminist movement so active 30, 40 years ago, and still is active in some ways. But also, in a lot of ways, women have had to find their power through what I would suggest is a cultural bias towards being like the men. Now, I talked about this before in, in other topics, how we have a business world that women have had to adapt to be in and act like men most of the time. And a lot of women I know, and a lot of clients I've had, were more in their masculine energetically than they were in their feminine because they had to embody that to live in and succeed in the business world. However, in so many ways, women had to fight to keep their power in that structure, and even though they're acting like men in a lot of ways, it was a competitive energy, but men being naturally that energy would have generally more dominance and it wasn't the most, wasn't the prettiest thing. So let me bring that into relationship for a second. So in relationship, <laughs> a subtle segue, for many women, they've been in relationships with men who were the, the man of the house, the breadwinner, the one who brings on the bacon, all those different food metaphors. And, for, and I know it's true in my own, uh, bringing my parents my mother was definitely giving her power to my dad because he ran the show and in some ways almost power interesting power is sometimes tied to money 
So whoever has the most money has the most power. That's wrong. I want to be clear about that. However, that's what we tend to teach and practice in our society because our society is a very capitalistic society. So there is such a sense of being driven by service to money first, which means that for some people, if they don't have as much money as somebody else, they feel less powerful. I'm speaking to myself on that one because I know I've had that one myself about feeling less powerful than somebody's lots of money. That's a whole. Mm, that's a whole other conundrum to unpack. Hmm. We'll see about that one. Hold on to that one for a sec. All right. So again, relationship. Let's take that one for a second. So a romantic relationship is the. I believe can be. The the dance and the polarity of equality but difference. So men and women are different but equal. That's one of my dreams and visions to teach the whole planet. But you know that's out of my hands at the moment. I can't make that happen yet. But I'm looking for help. But also, in some senses, women have, by default, in a lot of ways, because of behaviors they learn, not because they wanted to necessarily, but because they think that's the only way to do things. And I'm going to break that down in a second. Because the rules were, because maybe their mother taught them, or society taught them, or previous, or their, their father did, or previous relationships did, that women weren't as powerful as men, therefore you should give the power over to the man. That was kind of the, one of the most standard, unspoken rules that happen in relationships. Again, utterly incorrect but it was what was taught. So, I'm gonna break this down. So the why you give your power away, especially women, is because you feel that men, or you've been trained by men more accurately, to be supplicant to them. Submissive, surrendering, giving up, and it's one of those two words have been in a conversation I've watched on Facebook uh, today. But that sense of giving over your power to them, for them to control. Again, because it's tied to the man being dominant, him bringing more money, according to the rules, that sort of stuff. I've been in relationships where I gave my power away to women who had more money than I did, so I'm not saying I'm perfect to this by any means, and I know I played the, the reverse role in that situation. But again, money is not power, not really. I have a revolutionary thought that real power comes from loving. Real power comes from autonomy. Real p power comes from self respect and self-confidence not from how much money's in the bank because something i'm very aware of because i've been watching things happen in the world over the last several years in 2008 for example when the big crash happened in the united states a lot of men lost their will to live because they were so tied up externally to money versus to inner power sorry hi alex nice to see you August. what was that shit yes play with polarity as a powerful moment yeah yeah well <laughs> I've had conversations about this too and talked about women being in their masculine versus feminine. See, the thing is, what I'm very clear about having watched and learned this over the last 12, 13 years now, when women are in their feminine, they are four, far more powerful than men in their masculine. Let me give you a, an example or an illustration. Illustration. One of my teachers, actually, several of my teachers said the same things of using analogies to explain masculine and feminine energy. The feminine energy is like a massive river running through the landscape. The masculine energy is the river banks which create structure and form for that river to flow. The banks do not control the river, they guide the river, but also if the river becomes more full it can burst the banks. The feminine is the power of the river because there's that much power to knock down walls, knock down dams, knock down mountains and to wear them down. The masculine structure has power in its strength but it is not immovable. Actually, let me back up a second. I'm going to recap that. A man who's truly authentically in his masculine heart can be immovable in service to the feminine, in service to the masculine. That's more accurate. But men who aren't in their masculine are extremely um, unstable or unstirred. Uh, um, they're easy to push over, <laughs> energetically speaking. So woman, thank you, Alex. Amen, indeed. So when women are in their feminine, they're actually more powerful than they are in their masculine. And I've been talking about this quite a bit because I'm passionate about this piece. However, let's move back to the power conversation right now, which is almost an adjunct to that. So many women I know in this world feel like they're weaker than men because the culture, the society, the marketing, the media, the TV programming, the movies keeps portraying that false, false um, paradigm. The reality is women are far more powerful than men. I mean, obviously the most simpler thing is men don't have the, I don't have men have the strength if they had the ability to have childbirth. Women go through childbirth with a level of strength and determination and 
and grace sometimes that I am in absolute reverence and deep awe for. And I know for myself, I don't know if I could even handle that ever experience if that was, a, if that was ever a possible thing for men to do that. So the strength women have is far transcendent than what men have, generally speaking. One of the biggest gifts, one of the biggest gifts that women have as a strength is the ability to bring together collaboration and cooperation. Strength in numbers, so to speak. Most of us men are really more singular, linear type beings. We may have teams, but truth is we're still on our own. So just in numbers alone, women are more powerful because they can collect in the feminine to gather women together, and men too. One of the gifts that I think women need to bring to the planet as a whole, because as a culture, as a planet, as a society, we could do more, more, a lot more collaboration and cooperation. Anyway, that's my soapbox. I'll put that over there for now. There's lots of things coming through this conversation, apparently. So I've said what would cause why you give your power away. Here's what to do about it. First of all, what to do about it is to remember who you are. It's going to sound simple saying that. But ladies, for many of you, you've been trained, taught, educated, hypnotized, entrained, falsely taught that you were weaker than men, that you weren't who you thought you were, that you should act like men or copy somebody else or be something you're not. And the reality is when you are who you are, when you really are who you are, when you honor, open up to your full power, your full divinity, your full feminine love, power, or ma majesty, that's when your power shows up. That's when your power is more aligned and also when it cannot be taken away from you. That's true power. And frankly, when you're like that in a relationship, a man who knows what he's in, getting into, as in he steps into that from his masculine, will be the most transcendent, most amazing, most powerful relationship you'd ever had, you've ever had, and he's ever had. But it does take ownership of your own stuff, your own power, your own authority. This actually, this this topic came out of. A, I saw a post earlier from a, a friend who I don't know in person, but we know each other online. There's been an interesting dialogue we've had about this, and so I want to speak to the power piece because it's really important for me. To, I think to express this for a lot of women to hear this. It's also one of the things that I, I talked about in, in, in the course I've been creating. And yes, I'm going to plug something of my own, just so you know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have a course called Coming... Actually, it's a, I guess it's, a, it's an online program, group program, what do you call it? It's a group thing called Coming Home to Yourself, a thing, yeah, that I'm, well, I've launched. Basically, it's coming up very shortly. That's a pay-what-you-want course for women especially, but for anybody who wants to grow in their own self-support, which includes re-empowerment of yourself. Because for some people that you may know, maybe not yourself, but some people have been so unfortunately um, distracted or pulled away from their own power, they don't know how to get back to it. The course I've created, which right now is at 16 or 17 different elements, is powerful teachings on self-reflective practices, self-support, self-care, self-love, self-appreciation, self-confidence, self-forgiveness. There's a whole bunch more, including re-empowerment or, or re-establishment of power inside yourself. If this is something that calls to you, please reach out to me. I'll put the link in the comments for the course where you can read about it. There is no price on the course because it's pay what you want. There's a click link in the, on, the, on the webpage to click to sign up for a call with me so we can discuss that and you can tell me what you, what you want to invest. Because frankly, this is so you can get what you want and your investment is what counts. So I'm not setting a price point at this point. The next time around, maybe I will. This time I'm not, it's the first one, so I'm making it very available. Um, because again, remembering, reclaiming, and reowning your own power is absolutely where your true strength comes from and your true expression of fullness comes from so that every relationship around you will transform based upon where you stand. Because I've said many times before, every relationship around you is a reflection of your own relationship with yourself. The more that you embrace and own your own power, the more that you claim, claim the wrong word, you remember your own power and you come back to yourself, the more that everyone around you will do the same thing. They'll respect that. They may not get it right away, just to be honest, just to be clear. Some people are so blind, they will keep you in their mind in a box you don't belong in anymore. But you aren't in a box anymore. You've stepped out of it into your freedom, into your power, into your magnificence. And when they catch up, they'll go, oh, I didn't realize. They may actually apologize even. Anyway, that's a whole other conundrum to, to unpack. So. Oh, you're welcome, Alex. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. So you appreciate this reminder, and and, you'll, and thank you. So I'm reading it out because I'm going to put this on, on YouTube later on, and so people on YouTube won't see these comments. So I'm basically responding to a comment that I want to read out, so that way they know what I'm talking to. So thank you, Alex. Nice to see you, my broadcast, by the way. I haven't seen you for a while. Um, so that's basically it. That's my little 
ditty for today. <laughs> Episode 706. There's plenty more of these out there, so I'll give you the links where you can find my broadcasts. And by the way, for my course, I'll put the link in the comments, as I mentioned, and verbally so you know what it is. It's barryselby.com forward slash coming home is the name of the course. It's not on my website. You can see visibly. You have to go directly to that link. So this is my daily Facebook Live, in case you hadn't wondered. It goes out my personal page, although I might switch to my business, business page one of these days. I've been hearing rumbles about Facebook's management of videos, but that's for another time. So right now, um, my personal page at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here is where you see my broadcast, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page, amongst other places, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. And then all of those go onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe. There's a playlist, playlist a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, which I invite you to go check out and enjoy perusing through the titles and finding ones that speak to you. Um, if you want help or you challenge and want some questions answered, want some support, reach out to me over social media, you can message me or anything else. If you have any questions, thoughts about this topic, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. And if you feel like sharing it with somebody you think needs to hear it, please let, let them, you know, tag them, let them know about it. Um, I think that's it. I appreciate you being with me as always, and I hope this has been of help to you and benefit. And if you have any further questions, you know where to find me. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.